Caleb Crawford felt the terror grip the Seeley students as the brutal truths about Earth's bloody history flashed on the hollow displays in front of them, and he worried that the fragile alliance between his species and the Seeley was about to splinter into a thousand xenophobic shards. The lecture hall was packed as Caleb wiped his brow, trying to focus through his jitters. Being one of the only humans at the prestigious Galactic Academy was a huge honour and a heavy burden. Everything he said reflected on the entire human race. His words could bolster the new peace between humans and aliens or shatter it. He took a deep breath and started his presentation. Images of early human civilization filled the screens, along with depictions of brutal ancient wars and horrific 20th century atrocities. Mushroom clouds from atomic bombs boiled skyward. Rows of starved corpses were piled in death camp trenches. Soldiers shot civilians in occupied cities. Caleb noticed his classmates' expressions morph from curiosity to shock. The brilliant but arrogant Soleil, named Rigel in the front row, twitched his purple tentacles in agitation, eyes wide with growing horror. The young human tried to highlight mankind's positive achievements in art and science too, but all his audience seemed to register was a species with a depraved addiction to violence, cruelty, and bloodshed. As the prestige point approached zero, Rigel couldn't take any more. The top CLA student suddenly sprang up and stormed out, leaving a stunned silence. Caleb felt gut-punched as dismayed whispers rippled through the auditorium. This was a disaster. Rigel was a proud species purist who felt only his kind was truly civilized and deserving of galactic leadership. And now, Caleb had just handed him the perfect anti-human propaganda to spread far and wide. If Rigel succeeded in convincing the Sele that humans were nothing but savage warmongers who would drench the stars in blood, if given half a chance, then mankind could kiss any dreams of friendly galactic relations goodbye, or even of being left alone. There were Sele extremist factions who felt genetically engineering humanity into a more docile servant race was the only way to neutralize the threat they posed. A terrible sinking feeling gripped Caleb as he walked out of the lecture hall. His words were going to be twisted and used as weapons against his own kind now. He had to find some way to stop Rigel from smearing humans as psychotic killers that the galaxy needed to unite against. Because if Caleb didn't change the narrative and fast, then his presentation might end up being the opening salvo in a war between humans and aliens that could leave entire worlds glowing in radioactive ash. And this time, it wouldn't just be Earth. Later that evening, Caleb stared blankly at the holographic notes flickering above his dormitory desk, his mind still reeling from the disastrous presentation. He couldn't focus on studying, the image of Rigel's horrified expression seared into his thoughts. A sudden sharp knock at the door made Caleb jump. He hesitated, a sense of unease prickling his skin before getting up to answer it. The door slid open to reveal Rigel standing there, his posture stiff and tentacles twitching agitatedly. Rigel, what are you doing here? Caleb asked, surprised. I need to know more, Rigel said, his tone clipped. About the history you presented, the atomic bombings, the Unit 731 experiments, I want details. Caleb shifted uncomfortably. Look, those events were horrific, but they don't define humanity as a whole. We've learned from our past mistakes. Have you? Rigel cut him off, eyes narrowing. Because from where I stand, it seems like violence and destruction are ingrained in your species' very nature. That's not true, Caleb argued his heart sinking as he realized this was exactly the reaction he'd feared. Humans are capable of great compassion and progress too. But Rigel wasn't listening. He began to pace, voice rising as he laid out his theories about humans' innate brutality and the dangers they posed to galactic peace. As the conversation grew more heated, Caleb noticed Rigel kept glancing nervously at a small metallic device strapped to his wrist. Curiosity momentarily overrode his defensiveness. What is that? Caleb asked, pointing to the gadget. Rigel paused, hesitating. A personal defense mechanism, he finally said, for protection against potential threats. The implication hung heavily in the air between them. Caleb felt a chill run through him, 
as he realized Rigel's distrust of humans ran far deeper than he'd thought. The Sele student truly believed he needed to arm himself against his human classmate. Before Caleb could respond, Rigel turned abruptly and strode away, leaving a thick, uneasy silence in his wake. Caleb stood there for a long moment, mind racing. He'd hoped his presentation would foster greater understanding between their species, but instead it seemed to have only widened the gulf, fueling the very fears and prejudices he'd tried to dispel. Sleep eluded Caleb that night as he lay in bed, staring at the ceiling. A gnawing sense of dread clawed at his chest, a feeling that his actions had unleashed something beyond his control, something that could poison human Soleil relations for generations to come. The next morning, dread coiled in Caleb's stomach as he made his way to class. The once lively corridors felt eerily quiet, the chatter of his classmates replaced by tense whispers. As he walked, he caught snippets of hushed conversations. Did you hear about the humans? I can't believe we let them come here. Who knows what they're really capable of? Caleb kept his head down, avoiding eye contact with the Sele students, who now seemed to regard him with a mix of fear and suspicion. Even those who had once greeted him warmly now turned away, their tentacles twitching nervously as he passed. In the classroom, the chill was palpable. Caleb took his usual seat, only to find his classmates shifting away, leaving a conspicuous gap on either side. Throughout the lecture, he felt the weight of their stares, their eyes boring into him with a new intensity. Even the professors, once eager to engage with the Academy's first human student, now seemed hesitant, their lectures punctuated by awkward pauses and furtive glances in his direction. As Caleb navigated the day, he couldn't shake the sense that something had shifted overnight. The fragile acceptance he had worked so hard to build seemed to be crumbling before his eyes. It wasn't until he saw a group of Sele students huddled around a table, their tentacles flipping through a stack of old books, that he realized the extent of the damage. As he drew closer, he recognized the faded covers and yellowed pages, earth history books some of which had been banned for their inaccurate and inflammatory content. Rigel stood at the center of the group, his voice low and urgent as he pointed to a particularly graphic passage. You see, this is the true face of humanity. Violence, destruction, cruelty. It's in their very nature. Caleb's heart sank as he watched his classmates nod, their expressions hardening with each word. He stepped forward, trying to interject. Rigel, what are you doing? Those books, they don't tell the whole story. They're biased, misleading. But Rigel cut him off, his eyes glinting with a newfound hostility. I'm simply showing them the truth, Caleb, the truth you and your kind have tried to hide. As Caleb looked around at the sea of distrustful faces, he felt a chill run down his spine. The gulf between humans and Sele, once bridged by his efforts, now seemed wider than ever, and with each passing moment he could feel the tension rising, the whispers growing louder, the fear and suspicion taking root. He thought of the other human students, so few in number scattered across the academy. If Rigel's campaign of misinformation continued unchecked, how long would it be before that fear turned to something worse? As Caleb made his way back to his dormitory that evening, he couldn't shake the sense of unease that clung to him like a shadow. The academy, once a beacon of hope and progress, now felt like a powder keg waiting to ignite. And he couldn't help but wonder if he couldn't find a way to stem the tide of fear and hatred, to bridge the gap between their species, what would be the spark that set it all aflame? As the academy corridors buzzed with growing tension, Caleb sequestered himself in his room, poring over historical archives and cultural records. His eyes strained from the glowing hollow screens as he compiled evidence of humanity's nobler qualities, our capacity for compassion, our thirst for knowledge, our tireless drive to better ourselves and uplift others. He had to make the Sile see that humans were more than the sum of their darkest chapters. Caleb reached out to the handful of other human students, imploring them to share their own stories and perspectives. Together, they organized a public forum, an open dialogue to bridge the widening rift between their species. 
Caleb's heart raced as he stood at the podium, his carefully crafted presentation flickering on the screen behind him. But as he looked out at the auditorium, his stomach dropped. The seats were nearly empty, save for a scattered few Sele who shifted uneasily, their eyes darting towards the exits. Caleb swallowed hard and began to speak, his voice echoing in the cavernous space. He spoke of the great human thinkers who had advanced science and philosophy, the brave explorers who had pushed the boundaries of the known universe, the visionary leaders who had steered their civilizations towards peace and progress. But his words were cut short by a sudden commotion at the back of the auditorium. Rigel burst through the doors, flanked by a crowd of angry Silay students. They surged down the aisles, waving placards scrawled with xenophobic slogans, their tentacles lashing the air. Humans are a plague on the galaxy, Rigel shouted, his voice trembling with rage. A species of warmongers and savages. The protesters took up the chant, their cries rising to a fever pitch. Caleb tried to make himself heard above the din, pleading for calm and understanding, but his voice was drowned out by the mob's fury. Suddenly a glint of metal caught Caleb's eye. One of the protesters reared back and hurled a small device towards the stage. It clattered at Caleb's feet and erupted in a blinding flash and deafening bang. Panicked screams filled the air as the Sele students stampeded for the exits. Caleb, his ears ringing and vision spotty, staggered back from the podium. As the smoke cleared, he found himself surrounded by a knot of seething Sele, their wrist-mounted weapons trained on him. Rigel stepped forward, his chest heaving. He glared at Caleb with a mixture of terror and loathing. You and your kind are not welcome here, Rigel spat. Leave now before you bring ruin to us all. Caleb's heart hammered against his ribs as he raised his hands slowly, backing away from the armed students. His mind raced, desperately grasping for some way to salvage the situation. But as he looked into their faces, twisted with fear and hatred, he realized with sinking dread that his words alone could no longer bridge the gap. The seeds of xenophobia had taken root, and they threatened to tear the academy and the fragile peace between their species apart. With his heart pounding in his ears, Caleb made his way to the administration building, his mind racing with possible solutions to the escalating crisis. He knocked on the door of the dean's office, trying to steady his shaking hands as he waited for a response. The door slid open, revealing the stern face of Dean Zaxon. The Soleil administrator regarded Caleb with a mixture of apprehension and annoyance. Mr. Crawford, I assume you're here about the incident in the auditorium? Caleb nodded, stepping into the office. Yes, sir. I believe there's been a misunderstanding, and I was hoping we could work together to foster a dialogue between the human and Sele students. Dean Zaxon sighed his tentacles twitching. I'm afraid it's not that simple, Mr. Crawford. The situation has escalated beyond a mere misunderstanding. He gestured for Caleb to take a seat, then leaned forward, his expression grave. The Academy's board of directors has been monitoring the growing tensions, and they've come to a decision. In light of the recent events and the concerns raised by the Sele students and their families, we have no choice but to expel all human students from the Academy effective immediately. Caleb's heart sank, his mouth going dry. Expel? But, sir, that's not the answer. We need to work towards understanding, not segregation. The dean shook his head. I'm sorry, but the decision has been made. The safety and well-being of the Sele students must be our top priority. He pushed a hollow pad across the desk, the screen displaying an official notice of expulsion. You and your fellow human students have 24 hours to gather your belongings and vacate the premises. A transport ship will be waiting to take you back to Earth. Caleb stared at the holopad, his vision blurring with tears of frustration and disappointment. There has to be another way. Please, let me talk to the board. Try to find a solution. But Dean Zaxon was unmoved. The decision is final, Mr. Crawford. I suggest you use your remaining time wisely. Numbly, Caleb made his way back to the dormitory, his feet heavy with each step. He gathered the other human students, breaking the news to them in a voice hollow with defeat. They sat in stunned silence, the weight of their shattered dreams pressing down on them. 
As they packed their belongings, whispers of fear and uncertainty filled the room. What would happen when they returned to Earth? Would the news of their expulsion spread, fueling anti-alien sentiment back home? And what of the Sele? Would the fear and mistrust they had witnessed at the Academy infect the wider galactic community, leading to a future of conflict and isolation? With heavy hearts, the human students boarded the transport ship, watching as the Academy grew smaller in the viewports. Caleb pressed his hand against the cool glass, his mind replaying the events of the past few weeks. He couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning, that the seeds of fear and hatred sown at the Academy would take root and spread, poisoning the fragile peace between humans and Sele. As the ship broke atmosphere, Caleb closed his eyes, a single tear trickling down his cheek. He had come to the Academy with such hope, such faith in the power of understanding and cooperation. But now, as he hurtled through the void of space, he wondered if that faith had been nothing more than a naive dream doomed from the start. The stars streaked past the viewports, cold and indifferent to the drama unfolding within the ship. Caleb sat in silence, his mind turning over the events of the past few weeks, searching for a glimmer of hope in the darkness. But as the transport carried them further from the Academy, further from the promise of a shared future, that hope seemed to fade, swallowed up by the vast emptiness of space. The journey back to Earth stretched out before them, long and uncertain, a path leading away from the dreams they had once held so dear. Caleb leaned back in his seat, his eyes fixed on the viewport, watching as the stars blurred into streaks of light. Somewhere out there, he knew, the Sele were watching too, their hearts filled with the same fear and uncertainty that gnawed at his own. And in that moment, as the ship carried them through the silent void, Caleb couldn't help but wonder if the rift between their species had grown too wide to ever be bridged, if the future they had once imagined had been nothing more than a fleeting dream, lost to the cold, uncaring depths of space. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.